Hello, hello, everybody. It is 12.42 p.m. Central Time on the 6th of December, 2020. It's Sunday here in the United States. Start of a new week. Hope you're ready to have a good one. And I hope you had a good one last week. But we're here to talk about seismic events in case you don't know what's going on. So we're looking at 48 hours worth of earthquakes. If you're a new viewer, let me quickly explain the earthquakes that are raised higher off the planet are deeper into the earth, these deep earthquakes. And we have letter D's on the map where we expect the deep earthquakes to strike nearby. The letter D's have been on there for years at this point. And we have a new deep earthquake here, for instance, next to letter D. We get over here to Indonesia, and let me just quickly turn off the earthquake so you can see the other letter D's. Both sets of letter D's have been struck by two other new deep earthquakes in the past two days as well as up to the north. We have another deep earthquake that struck several days ago up at the letter D all the way up here next to Kamchatka, and that was a deep 6.4 from the start of the week, and that earthquake is here marked in red, raised high off the globe. So we're dealing with a bunch of deep earthquake activity, and now spreading out from those deep earthquakes, we've had a significant increase in activity spreading down across New Zealand, for instance, Spreading down to our X marks the spot, 4.9, 5.0 earthquake to the south. Additionally, south of New Zealand, 4.6. Central New Zealand, 3.5. There's only one more spot to move, and that's right here on the North Island next to Topo Volcano, where we're looking for near 5.0 or greater activity, but I put it at 5. Now, over to the west, Aziz, guys. Three different earthquakes have struck in the past two days. You don't see them here on this feed. This is the 50-5-0 earthquake feed from the Europeans. But let's turn on a display capture just so you can see a little bit better. Starting a day and a half ago, a 3.5 earthquake came rolling in up here next to the Arrow. 2.7 earthquake struck shortly after that down here next to Perth. Then a 3 struck just west of Oluru, and now a new 2.6 has struck up to the northeast edge of the Craton going out to the plains. You see the yellow versus greenish color there. So really, that's one, two, three, four earthquakes in the last day and a half, two days, across this whole portion of the Craton's, plural, multiple Craton's, make up the plate. Okay, so push came in, spreading down to Perth, over to Uluru, up to the northeast. I would expect down near Adelaide and maybe all the way over on the far eastern edge of Australia to move with this. It's a big amount of activity going right back up to here, where we had two 50,000-foot-high blasts, one at Luotolo Volcano next to East Timor, right there, and another at Semeru here in East Java, plus all the deep earthquakes. To top it all off, a spread of fives going down to our other letter X on the fracture zone in the South Indian Ocean. Southern Africa moved with a near 5.0 earthquake down in South Africa itself, south of our letter X, but it's pretty obvious both X's are right next to them, being hit as energy is going out and across where we expect it to across the whole edge of the Indian plate over to Africa. Now, before we get over into Europe, check this out, guys. New 6.0 range earthquake, 6.1, came in right at the border of Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia. Now, really, I'd like to just open this up on the USGS plate boundary map just to show it to you here. Do you see how the plate boundary starts all the way at Central America? And it goes down across Central South America and then goes down here to the south. This is the halfway point between up here and down here, where the two fracture zones meet. The two plate boundaries meet. This is that middle fulcrum point. Next to it, a series of deep earthquakes have happened on this letter D, which you can't even see because of all the earthquake activity. This letter D was struck by a series of deep earthquakes over the past several days. So now a shallower, larger earthquake has popped off right in the middle. Additionally, we started to see small activity, but still noteworthy. Mid-range threes breaking out in Ecuador. We have the warning going at the tip of the arrow from Galapagos to Ecuador. Sanjay and Reventador both started to erupt. Let's just quickly, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone there. Let's quickly go look at the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, see what's going on there. Okay, Kluchevskoy in Russia, Dukono in Indonesia, Suenizajima in Japan, Popocatépetl in Mexico. Oh, look, Nevados de Chile and down in Chile. 
That's a new addition on the list. Wasn't on last week or the week before. Luwatolo, like I mentioned, still going up to 8,000 feet. Ibu in Indonesia, it's just a small eruption. Sabangkaya in Peru, just puff emissions. Is there anybody else? Oh, look, Manam is now back in Papua New Guinea. That's the new addition to the list this week. How high did we go? 8,000 feet? Manam is suddenly erupting. Okay, all right. Nevados del Ruiz is erupting in Colombia as well. Man, okay, so let's just show you where these are. We'll start right here. Sanjay and Reventador, both right at the center here next to where the letter V is. We also have Nevado del Ruiz erupting here in Colombia. We go up to the north, and Talica Volcano finally fell off the list after the earthquake struck yesterday. Right here where all the rings overlap at Nicaragua. Popocatépetl erupting in Mexico. Fuego erupting here in Guatemala. Let's add those together. One, Popocatépetl. Two, Fuego. Three, Telica. Four, Nevados del Ruiz. Five and six, San Jay and Reventador. Going down to the south, Sabancaya. That's seven. And then Nevados de Chilean, or Nevado del Chilean, here at the Argentina-Chile border. I mean, that's like eight eruptions in a day. Two days, if you really want to be specific about the eruption up here to the north. So, that's a lot. Let's get a sip of coffee while we think about that for a second. <laughs> okay, so 6.0 activity in the middle of the plate. Down to the south, all the way at the south tip going into Antarctica. 5.0 activity, 5.1. Eruptions in between the two, right at the middle point. Nevados de Chilean. And we go up to the north, same thing, where the rings overlap. Eruptions taking place, and a 5.1 earthquake on the north side. So 5.1 to the north, 5.1 to the south. But to see the equal spacing on that, you have to look like a planet away. North side of South America, south side of South America. 5.1, 5.1. Eruptions in between up to the north, eruptions in between down to the south. That's all in the last two days. Speaking of in the last two days, Japan also got hit. And we went right into downtown Tokyo again. And we're right off the shores, too, with a 5.1. Gee, that seems like it's the number of the day, 5.1 so far. Downtown Tokyo, 4.5. And it's right in the middle of downtown Tokyo, or right next to it. 5.1 out in the ocean on the plate boundary. Let me show you the plate boundary again. All the way over here in Japan, there, there's the plate boundary. It's like an H shape, and we have two sides to it, east and west. Eastern side had energy come around up through Guam in the past few days. Let me just take you back in time a couple days. Take you down to Guam. Take a look. Look at this. See that? A line of 4.9s. And I'm not exaggerating. It really is a line of 4.9s going along the edge where Guam is. 4.9 here and a 4.9 there. And then going up to the north, we also had those 4.8s and 4.9s. But ultimately, it goes back up to the big, deep earthquake. So we've got a lot going on. And now that Japan is starting to move, we warned the area right here. We warned Guam up to Japan after the big, deep earthquake. But so far, we're at fives, not sixes. The only sixes that are happening are happening so far on the opposite side of the plate and next to the deep earthquake itself over in Alaska. Now let's go to the west, China. We have a warning going for China. So far, I've only seen just a few small earthquakes go across over into Russia. Yet. But look, 4.9. Come on. And now look over to the west. 4.9. It's not me doing anything with the reporting of the earthquakes, guys. We're showing everything 4.0 and greater internationally from the USGS at Showing everything from the Europeans, too. So it's just like 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9. Wouldn't you think most of these are like a 5? And that they're just deliberately taking them all down to 4.9 so we don't have a record number of 5s in a year? Don't, don't you think that? I, that's what I think. You'll never convince me otherwise. There's no way it could be all 4.9s. Anyway, China, nothing. Right up to the border on both sides. And we have a warning right here in the middle. Going back up across Mongolia and into Siberia, pretty much to where the earthquake is up here in Siberia. And that's all based upon the deep 6.4. China could go up into the 6 or maybe even higher range. 6.4 or higher. It's not like that happens every day in China. So we have to watch for that. Now, same time that's going on, that 4.9 that I just talked about, over here north of Afghanistan, south Tajikistan. But Europeans 
we've got to talk about this. So first of all, let's talk about the earthquake that struck yesterday first. 5.3 came rolling in here. Look where it came in. South Turkey's coast, east of Crete. We also got a 4.5 in the middle of the Aegean Sea. This totally fits with the warning. We warned the central Aegean, and I mentioned east of Crete as the furthest to the east that I would watch. And I was centered here in the center of the Aegean Sea. Well, that's where the 7 point something earthquake struck a few weeks ago with the tsunami. But then something phenomenal happened. A new deep earthquake struck down below Italy in the Tyrrhenian Sea right here, raised high off the globe. Let's wait for this to refresh just so you can see it. There we go. Deep 4.0 earthquake struck yesterday. And I got on and talked about this last night on Twitch live. I didn't save it and put it on YouTube, but hundreds of people in Twitch saw me get on last night. We talked about the 4.0 and I said we have to watch for a shallower, larger earthquake to pop up from Campo Basso all the way up here to the area just south of Florence. And the middle area being Abruzzo. And I mentioned the plate boundary in Italy and said watch for up to 5.0 activity. Last night a 5.2 or 5.1 came rolling into Albania. They downgraded it to 4.5, 4.6. They shaved it away all night long. I'm not exaggerating. It came in at 5. We were all saw it come in. We were talking about it in chat. Then throughout the night, downgrade, 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 downgrade. But they couldn't take it down below. It doesn't matter really. So I told people to watch for a shallow 5 and a shallow 5 hit. They took it down to 4.6 and a 4.5. Well, technically two separate earthquakes. But I would like to pull the coordinates and show it to you on the plate boundary map. Actually, let's just look at it on the plate boundary map. We don't really need to pull the coordinates. Over here, okay, it's still on here. Here's the deep earthquake below the Tyrrhenian Sea. And here's the shallower, larger earthquake over at Albania. We warned the area. Here, let me turn on the street map now. Let's see, street map. We were in the area from Campobasso, which is right here next to Foggia. Okay, so here, let me see if I can find it. Uh, of course, I can't find it on their map. It might not even be marked, or maybe I'm just missing it because it's something I don't normally look at. Uh, it's, it's somewhere right down in here, okay? Uh, again, you'll just have to go search it yourself. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Campobasso. Small town there, but there's Foggia. So we warned from Campobasso up here all the way to Florence along the plate boundary, the red line. And the earthquake struck right across the Adriatic Sea over in Albania. But I still think Italy is going to move. It's just this is the first response, the first little upwelling of pressure. This happened within hours. Let's see. Let's find out. This happened at UTC time 719. This deep earthquake happened at UTC time 150. So, six hours later. So, first the deep earthquake happened below the Tyrrhenian Sea. Then six hours later, a 5 hits. They downgraded it all night now. It's 4.6, whatever. But we still have to watch along the red line that goes up into North Italy. The red line is the plate boundary. So, go back to the grayscale map just for more easy identification. Red line goes up into North Italy and dead ends into the Swiss Alps. Okay? Now let's look at the smaller earthquakes that go around the rest of the plate because you'll see it's pretty much sectioned off in the Mediterranean with hardly any activity going over to the east. The furthest east we go and north we go is up into Romania on the red arrow indicating that there's some force or power going around the outside edge of the southeast edge of the plate. Should go up into Poland, up into the UK, and ultimately up to Iceland, but it's only in the three level right now. 3.4 going over to Romania. The rest is all south, staying south in the Mediterranean itself. We go over to the Pyrenees, that's at the Spain-France border, and then a line of earthquakes going down to Gibraltar and now escaping out over to the west. Escaping out over to the west, I really mean it. Look, the plate boundary goes south of Spain and over to the Azores and dead ends where we have an X, and that's where we watch for the new energy to flow where the X's are. Okay, now let's jump back across, go over into Alaska, continental United States and Hawaii. You know what? Let's just get Hawaii out of the way right now. USGS issued a statement a few days ago about the swarm. Now, you guys know they watch my channel, right? And they wait for me to get on and say something and to see if there's any public pressure. <laughs> I swear to you, that's true. Ah, I hate it when people swear. 
I promise you that's true. Anyway, USGS came out and said that there was a swarm happening at Kilauea and the highest that it was going was 3.0 and that there was nothing to worry about. <laughs> okay. And they left it at that. The problem is the next morning, the very next morning after they issued their statement about the swarm that's happening at Kilauea not meaning anything and the highest it's going to 3 a new four, a new rare earthquake struck over on the edge of Mauna Loa volcano, the bigger volcano back behind Kilauea. Let me just show you where the four struck. Now a swarm is broken out there. A four and a swarm is broken out on the side of Mauna Loa after the USGS said Kilauea didn't mean anything. I'm telling you guys, they shouldn't. If you're watching from the, <laughs> I'm not talking to you at the USGS. Make less pronounce, pronouncements and more observations. And just go where it goes. Okay? <laughs> Word of advice from a social media guy. Trust me. Kids, you do that in your life, you'll do well your whole life. I'm not exaggerating. Make less pronouncements and more observations. So the observation I was making was, a few days ago, the swarm of earthquakes happening in a basic ring around the Middle East Rift Zone is related to the Middle East Rift Zone. And the Middle East Rift Zone is recharging from magma down below that's connected to the other volcanoes. And if there's a backup in this, or if there's just a lot of charge coming in, magma speaking, coming up through the magma, some kind of VLF maybe, very low frequency, ultra low frequency, something that's causing a rise in pressure or tension inside of the magma chamber at Kilauea, which then displaces out to the other volcanoes, up and out. And here's Kilauea. This whole thing starts to surge. Some kind of new pressure starts coming in. Gee, I wonder where it's coming from. Gee, it couldn't possibly be coming from all of our deep earthquakes around the plate and the big deep 6.4 right up here at the tip of the Hawaiian island chain that goes up to Kamchatka. That's where the big deep earthquake was, the big deep 6. And then all of a sudden, flare up down here. And it doesn't mean anything. It's related to Kilauea. And Kilauea is recharging, which then displaces Mauna Loa. Mauna Kea, and even all the way back up to Hulu, Kahulue and Maui and so forth, you'll see activity even up here when this charge comes in. And let's explain one more time where the charge is coming from. The deep earthquakes happening below the West Pacific that then puts a charge or tension or force across the plate, and it seeks out the fracture zones and weak points, hence the island chain there to begin with, and the line of undersea mounts that bisects the whole Pacific plate, Okay, that goes up to now. Alas, so Hawaiians, guys, your volcano's recharging. Will it blow? Yes. There will be some kind of event at some point. And likely less than many years, but likely more than a year. I said I thought it would be about a year. Well, here we are at two years. And something's happening now. But it's just slight. Look, I would expect way bigger seismic activity if something was going to go on. Like, eruption-wise. So a four up at Mauna Loa is nothing to scoff at. A swarm, but it's not a huge swarm. It's just a noteworthy swarm breaking out after Kilauea starts to charge. Proof that the volcanoes are connected directly to each other. And that tension at one creates stress in another, and you get a break in another right next to it. That's proof. It's just, to me, that's very interesting that that happens. It means there's a connector down below between Mauna Loa and Kilauea, or they're just they're side by side, and when one's recharging, what do you think that's going to do to the other one? Right next to it. Two inflating balloons next to each other. One's inflating more than the other. And they're butted right up against each other. Think of it that way. Okay. Now, up to Alaska we go. And a line of earthquakes jumps off the plate boundary and goes slamming into the plate edge, which is a bend here where we have Mount Denali right at the tip of the bend. The highest point in North America is right here where the mountain range bends. Now, look, like a focus point, going to Mount Denali, that's where we go to, and then spreading out up to the north in both directions from it. But that's the filter point right there where the highest point is. Now, really, I think it's the highest point because so much energy comes in off the red line plate boundary up on the north side of the Pacific plate and goes into Alaska pretty much right there. This red line goes up and around, but then there's faults interior that go across Anchorage, and Mount Denali, of course, is right there, the Denali Fault Zone system. So like a ramp, the seismic force comes up and goes into the plate, hits the edge of the plate, goes to that focus point next to the highest point in North America where clearly buckling is pushing up and then spreads out across the plate into it. 
One more time, the Craytown Edge. Look at the accretionary belt going up into Alaska. The green part. Now, the green part goes into the purple part, which is over here going into Canada. And the mountain ranges define that edge. You'll notice no earthquakes. We have a few small quakes in, what is that, Yukon? And then going down across into Alaska. But nothing reported from the rest of Yukon all the way down to the border with the United States where we have a quarry blast. Now, they do report noteworthy sized earthquakes here along the coast. Anything 4.5 and greater, USGS sometimes reports. Sometimes. And if it's under 4.5, it's iffy. They might report it. They might not. Canadian Agency has a 30-day earthquake feed. And it doesn't update usually on the weekends much unless something significant happens. Small earthquakes. It is automated, but I mean update like on the 30-day feed for Earthquake 3D. And it doesn't help much. So unless something significant happens, we don't get a report from the USGS at all. They just don't show it. So I'm showing you all the earthquake here. Let's turn down to 0.0, .0 and greater from the USGS for the last week. Nothing, right? Okay, so they don't report anything along the Canada coast. And the Canadians aren't reporting anything significant because obviously there's nothing on the USGS feed, right? <laughs> right? Ah, we're putting a lot of trust on that good old USGS. Us, Gus, as we call them. Okay, let's go look at the last days worth of 0.0, .0 and greater earthquakes. Reported from the USGS. People ask me, why do I use them? Because I have to. There is no one else to use. And I don't dog them too hard. I, they're, they're not a monolith. They're a huge agency made up of thousands of people. It's totally fallible and capable of making error, just like anybody. If I'm going to be held to account, they should be held to account. Basic stuff. Okay. But we're not dogging them. They're doing a good job. The people went to school for that. They invested their whole lives into it. And they truly believe in the science behind what they show. Now, the theoreticals, I, I would say the USGS is great at reporting on earthquakes and detecting the earthquakes and revising the magnitudes and everything. They're great at pinpointing on the beach ball tensor. Okay, all that. But when it comes to doing the research, like theoreticals and future research, they're just not that great at it. They're, they, they have to n stick to what they know. And any new developments that come along, like something I found with the earthquakes going across the Craton, that that's going to take a whole team of debating scientists over decades to figure out how a standing wave is forming and going across the Craton edge and dropping off earthquakes all across the edge and diffusing out as it goes all the way across the fleet. Fours, threes, twos over to the East Coast. That that's previously defined what they thought. I wouldn't expect the USGS to delve into that. I would expect a team of research scientists at some university who want to get like some financing <laughs> to do that. Or some guy like me who finds it to just keep going on it because why not? You find it, you don't get financing from it, well, you're going to show the scientific establishment until they accept it. <laughs> Okay, there's like two ways of doing it, right? One way is to write a white paper and try and get a team of people to sign off on it. The other is to keep pounding it until it's undeniable. I guess you call that the Galileo effect. One gets you praise, the other gets you under house arrest. Just ask Galileo, who they put under house arrest because people wouldn't look through a tube. <laughs> no, I will not look through the tube. All right. It's like, it's like the movie They Live. But Galileo's trying to get you to look through, instead of the glasses, <laughs> he's trying to get you to look through the telescope. He's like, no, look through the scope. He wrestles you to the ground. All right. <laughs> we have a... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Once I get to the United States, I always just finally break down into a more jovial person or something, right? Okay. So here we are. We're at Yellowstone, of all places. We have a series of small earthquakes and a significant size, 2.7. Actually, I think it may even have a few felt reports on that. Let's see. Hold on. Let's go find out if there's any felt reports. Because this is 2.7 up near the surface. It probably was felt. Oh, my goodness. Nobody felt it at a 5.5 kilometer depth? Oh, somebody had to feel that. They just didn't report it. Okay, whatever. 2.7. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. That's an assumption on my part. But it's at the park. There's still people there. But wait, wasn't there something here in the park yesterday? How about a swarm of earthquakes? How about a hot spot? And the hot spot was at Lake Yellowstone. 
So let's just pull the coordinates on this. Actually, let's get the coordinates from the USGS, put them in, see where it brings us in on Lake Yellowstone, and see if the hotspot's still marked from yesterday. I don't know if it'll still be there or not. Let's go see. Here we go, over to Yellowstone. Okay, right, uh, we're inside the lake. Man, we are, s how ironic, dot island. Okay, so the hot spot was right over here on the north side. It's right over here next to this road, back up in the woods, somewhere right here. And I mentioned to the people that you don't normally get out and just go walk through the woods at Yellowstone. Okay, that's not, it's not like a park, it, you know, it's not like any kind of state park you would go to. It's massive, it's got bison, I told the bison story yesterday. Okay, now we have an earthquake right next to where the hotspot was, within just a couple miles. It's not marked today, the hotspot's too old, it's from yesterday. So new earthquake there. Same sized earthquake striking over in Idaho, but overall, let's just make sure this is the last day's full feed here, because the number of earthquakes up here is next to nothing. How, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six earthquakes across all of Idaho and Yellowstone. Longtime viewers know that's weird. That's odd. That's an oddity. We would expect many more earthquakes. We would call this low in frequency, low in number. Normally, we have a rolling snare drum. This would just be a person single-handedly hitting one at a time on a drum. Boom, boom, boom boom, instead of a rolling snare. So where did the energy go? Well, something else stopped up here. Once again, another day of no earthquakes, not even a 0, 0.0, reported out of Oregon. And one day's worth of quakes, we have a single earthquake reported over at the Olympic Peninsula, and I've got to look it up. Hoquiam, Washington. Hoquiam? Hoquiam? I probably am butchering that. People ask me to look up the pronunciations on names before I do my updates. How would I know? I'd have to look up every earthquake before I do my updates. And then somehow memorize their the name spelling. And I'm certainly not going to take the time to go look up the spellings and pronunciation keys while I'm live. Now, you know how long that would take? How, like, how do you pronounce this? Is that Recom or Raycom? Let's go look it up. So we're at a waterworks, and we're at, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there anything here nearby that we need to know about before I go any further? Some kind of military installation that I don't want to run into? I just want to know. I'm asking, asking for a friend. Okay, so we're on the edge of the Olympic Peninsula. At this point, I think it would be appropriate to check the tremor map. And the tremor map shows us normally tremors, little red dots on the map here, vibrations as the plate moves. Sometimes there's hundreds or thousands of tremors when the plate goes into what we call an episodic tremor slip. There's other times where there's just a handful, like five or six, and we consider that basically the plate slowing down to next to nothing. In this case, we have 90, which is kind of in between the two. It's between five and a few hundred, right? So we're at that upper 90 near 100 location here in Oregon. Now, the other spot that's moving is up in Washington, and this is as of the 5th. Let's go back to the 4th. Look at that. It shifted. It was only moving in Oregon two days ago. Let's go back to the 3rd. It shifted again down in California. So let's just go back to the start of the month. Let's go back to the end of November, November 30th, and go from there. Okay, so here we are, six days ago, basically, Northwest Oregon, Northern California. Move forward, we shift down to Northern California big time. The rest of the other points stop shifting. Go forward to the second. California breaks apart, kind of dies out down to 20 tremors. Next day, it starts to pick back up, 22, but they're all focused at Northern California, right at the Oregon border. Go forward to the 4th, look, splits apart again, goes into Oregon again, two spots. Then the 5th, back up into Washington. Then, same time that's going on, 5th into 6th, we get a new earthquake up here. Right where we shifted to, Puget Sound, earthquake right next to it. So all those locations that I just showed you, they correspond to one another. Look at this. 
Look where the red dots are here on the map. Hopefully you guys can see all this. And we're going to go over to the USGS plate boundary map and look at the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. And I show this in almost every update. I want every new person to pick this up. These jagged edges of the Juan de Fuca belong to the Pacific plate. Those jagged edges point into the spots that shift. So for instance, the southernmost jagged edge here points right in if we go due east, right into the Seattle Fault, the spot that's shifting in the Puget Sound. Down to the south and southwest Oregon, this, like a giant arrow, points right into the spot that's shifting there. Northern California, the southern arm of the Juan de Fuca, parallel right here, shifting there. And this pinnacle tip out here corresponds to here at Central Oregon, and the axial seamount, the jagged edge here, corresponds to the point that's shifting at the Washington-Oregon border. Every jagged edge out here corresponds to a shifting point up in the plate here. This is down below this. Obviously, there's the ocean is above it. This is lower than this. But I want you to think of these pointing up and into the United States North American plate, Laurentia. These jagged edges pointing over, up, and into here. And here is where it shifts when tension is created here. And it transfers across and up into. But no earthquakes. So it made my job real easy today. Just wanted to look up. Let's get a sip of the coffee as we go down into California. You contemplate the lack of earthquakes and this whole thing shifting. What does that mean? If all this is shifting and there's no earthquake breakage over to the east but just a handful wouldn't that mean this is storing up energy, charging it like a battery or a capacitor? You know the difference, right? The capacitor charges up and discharges it all at once. Battery stores it up and releases it over time. There are also quick discharge batteries, but so the capacitor all at once, zap out. And you, know, you use a uh, capacitor. <laughs> a capacitor is in a taser, for instance, right? Zap it all out at once, charge it up with a little bit and over time with the battery and then zap it off all at once through a capacitor. Well, okay, so is this charging it up? No earthquakes, that says it all. Nothing going over to the edge of the craton. One other thing in the last day. How about the red earthquakes are from really from last night? You'll also notice a distinct lack of earthquake activity over across the edge of the craton in the Midwest and the East Coast. In the last 12 hours, one earthquake down in Texas. Tension is really being stored up across the whole edge of the Graton from the East Coast. So think of it more like this. Everywhere on the edge of the Graton right now is charging full of seismic energy, following that arrow back all the way back to where it's quiet up here, and that this is pushing into it. So that means there's a great amount of tension between, and that means the break is going to be coming. I think the break will come out in the ocean where the tension's ultimately coming from. But we can't rule out that it breaks over between the red line here and the craton edge over to the east. And then that reduces the area to watch, dramatically reduces the area to watch. But right now there's no earthquakes there at all, or well, I mean again, what, six there, seven total? Seven in the whole northwest in a day, please. While there's 90 tremors, there's seven earthquakes? Something's up, the plate's shifting, charging. Storing it up like a capacitor, it should break. Now look at the earthquakes down to the south. A lot of people contacting me about what happened down here in Southern California. I think we should probably go look that up, actually. Let's go look up that earthquake here. Hold on. Oh, wait, look. Oh, how quaint. They downgraded and downgraded the 4.0 earthquake to a 3.6, did they not? Looks like it. Looks like they've shaved this one down. So many people. Look, 2,500 people. People contacted me about the 4.0 earthquake. What 4.0 earthquake, guys? You guys all conspiracy theorists some kind? What are you, fear mongers? Trying to push some 4.0 earthquake baloney on me, huh? Let's go look at the uh, station list and see what the local stations show. Ha! <laughs> okay. We throw out the high end and we throw out the low end. That gives us a good, broad swath of what actually struck. These are the local stations now around the area in California, which I would think are properly calibrated, and if they're not, we need to fire everybody in charge. So, 4.1, 4.2. Let's keep going. 4.2. So far, the highest I'm seeing is 4.2. There's another 4.2. Okay? 
Let's keep going down the list. And the lowest I'm seeing is 3.5, 3.6. So we throw out the 4.2s and 4.3s. And we throw out the 3.6s and 3.7s. Let's keep going down the list. 4.1, 4.2. Is there anything bigger than a 4.2? Oh, look, we got 4.4s on the list. Okay, how many of those? Just one so far. Okay, this station list is bogus. <laughs> look how long it is. It's like next to nothing. What the heck? Okay, something's wrong. Something's wrong. There are normally thousands of stations that can re report in on an earthquake in California. you got to be kidding me. Okay, let's go down the uh, other lists. The low ball list, if you will. Do the same thing. We're going to throw out the high end and throw out the low end. So I'm here already to tell you. Just by looking at the number of stations, local magnitude, we throw out the 3.6s and 3.7s. We also throw out the 4.2s and 4.3s, which leaves us with a 4 to 4.1. So it was a 4, most likely. I mean, which do you think? Do you think all the stations are wrong and that the pencil pusher egghead in the cubicle is right? Let's go look it up. Let's go put the coordinates in and see what's there. I'm sorry, didn't mean to name call. Egghead. Egghead. Is that even name calling? Oh, I... <laughs> I'm an egghead. Wait, what's that? Oh, oil. Oh, look at the we have a wonderful t gas well out here. Hold on. Uh-oh. Dude, look what we have here. Hold on. Is that the right coordinates? Hold on. It is. Warner Springs, California. We're an electrical substation. Big one, too. Wow. Oh my gosh. See, this is why I look this stuff up. You know, let's go let's go look at the station. You can't tell me it's coincidence at this point. These these electrical substations are not everywhere. Certainly not. Look, I mean, look, look all the way around. Do you notice anything? How about no other electrical substations? <laughs> there we are. We got the big one right there and the earthquake's right next to it down the road. What what is this place? Anza Borrego Park, of course. Well, it makes sense to build the electrical substation on Borrego Springs with the big power lines going out from it. You know, I wonder if that's what's causing the earthquakes there at Anza Gap, the slow slip. I wonder. I'm wondering out loud. It's right there. There's no debating that. Let's go look it up on the USGS map. Let's go over to the latest earthquake map down here and just take a look at it. See how close it is to the actual Anza Gap. It is. It is so close. So there's Borrego Springs. It goes right across it. There's Anza Borrego State Park. <sighs> okay. Hey, a new earthquake just struck right next to where I'm talking about. Ah, gee, uh, Like, that's never happened before. Let's carry on. So, 3.6 down to the south was a 4. But what about the 4 up to the north? Did they downgrade that? They did not downgrade that. Let's just make sure. It's at 4.3 to 4.4 still. So this is the one that I think most people would be wanting to know about. Although everybody contacting me about the one down south. Lakeport, California. It's got a thousand felt reports. Doesn't that, isn't that weird to you guys? The four in Southern California that they downgraded has thousands more <laughs> than this one up to the north that's surrounded by millions of people. Again, there's something wrong going on. But let's go put the coordinates in. So we're going from the electrical substation... Right next to the electrical substation. And look where we are here. Hold on. What is this? Some kind of clear cut up there in the mountains. I don't know what that clear cut's for because there's nothing there on that. But looking at the greater area, we're right at the edge of Clear Lake. And we know what's at Clear Lake. All of these. Geothermal turbines. Pipelines taking steam to these electrical generating turbines with all of their high voltage generation. And there's so many turbines on the hillsides here. That's just one. They're all over this hillside. And I'd say there's at least 10. And they go down to the south. So we're right here on the north side. We've got a clear cut of some kind right next to it. Makes me wonder if we're looking at another power transfer location. But I don't, again, I don't see any wires here. Could just be a property line. That might be it. But 
We're right next to where they're generating the power, which can't be a coincidence. It's not like they're generating power everywhere in California from geothermal turbines. So to get something like that there is very, very troubling in light of the other earthquake striking at the other electrical stations. It's just right next to it, that's all. But we're also on a fault, so this can't be dismissed. So the fault zone, let's go get the name here, Makama Fault, I believe, but let's just go find out for sure. Yeah, Makama Fault Zone, north section right here. It goes right down into the volcano. Right here is Mount Kanakti and Geyser Peak, where all the geysers and geothermal pumping is. So the fault connects down to the south, but really, ultimately, look which way it goes. It goes back up to the northwest, doesn't it? And goes back into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. So let's recap. Down to the south, 4.0 earthquake gets strangely downgraded to 3.6. Right next to an electrical substation on the Elsinore Fault next to the San Jacinto and Anza Borrego Springs. Borrego Springs. Up to the north, a 4.4, 4.3 to 4.4, it too coming in next to electrical generation. But it's two on a fault. So both faults right next to electrical generation. Or electrical generation right next to both faults. Could be chance if it was just those spots, I would say that. But in this case, it's not that at all. Let's go down to the south, shall we? Let's look at the rest of the earthquakes across California. So recapping 4.0 or 4.3, up next to Clear Lake Volcano, which is, again, it's a geothermal Two earthquakes on the creeping section of the San Andreas, that's it, with a big open silent zone across the Bay Area. Another big open silent zone down south, down to where the green earthquake is, the newest earthquake that just struck. I would look between our sets of earthquakes right now for a potential large release greater than 4.3 to 4.4. In the next 48 hours, it wouldn't even be that long, so I guess Bay Area down to Ridgecrest again. We'll have to watch. For something significant to strike here very soon. Bay Area, San Fran, all the way down to Ridgecrest, across Central California. Next 48. Okay, now, over to the east. The volcanoes are still moving. The super volcano here on the California side of the border, Long Valley. Right here at the border with Mono Lake and going over to Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Center. And Monte Cristo Hills is a swarming out still since the 5 hit earlier this week. Just to trickle out, 1.4 and 1.8 over to the east, a 1.4 and a 1.2 to the south. So it's basically two of the same sized earthquakes going out and down to the south and over to the east. Following our trajectory, we expect to go over trying to escape out to the edge of the Craton. So far, it's all stuck back in the northwest. I think it's pretty obvious on that. From here to the north, where it's quiet. And from here to the south, boom, multiple 4.0 earthquakes. So, hey, let me put it to you this way. A 4.0 earthquake up here in Northern California and a 4.0 earthquake down here in Southern California are both south and east of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. So fours down here, while this goes quiet, it's so obvious, at least obvious to me, that the northwest portion of the craton is indeed charging or shifting. And to my longtime viewers, I think you guys see it too. Okay, so another line of earthquakes at Ridgecrest, but it's broken into three distinct clusters now. So we have a northern cluster, a central cluster, and a southern cluster. The northern cluster is in Kozo Volcanic Field. Let me show you what's there. See, it says Kozo Junction. USGS doesn't tell you it's a volcanic field, do they? But there's something else there that they don't tell you. Oh, whoops. Let me get the co right coordinates here. Copy and paste. So we're leaving one volcano where they're generating electricity. Look where we're going, guys. I'm serious. Look. Kozo Volcanic Field. Devil's Kitchen Geothermal Pumping Operation. That's the name of it. Electrical generating turbines again. Big time, too. It's all over the place here. And they're getting lots of steam out from Kozo Volcanic Field where they drilled in. And that's where the earthquakes start. Cluster up here. Cluster in the middle. Remember what I just showed you. Three clusters. Let's go to the cluster in the middle. So we're leaving the electrical generating station at the volcano. How many is that now? It's too many. Too many. Look where we go to. 
See these black things over here in the desert? These are lava flows that go back to Volcano Peak and all of its eruptive points. There's like 15 there. 15 different spatter cones, cinder cones, and eruptive points over a long period of time. The lava flows, some are covered in sand, some are younger, some are older, but they all kind of go in the same direction. So that's where the middle cluster is. And the southern cluster goes down here. Let's just grab it. Well, let's just grab one from right in the middle. Did I open that? Did it open? 0.9 Cyril's Valley. So we go from a power generating station at a volcano down to Volcano Peak, and we end up down here, right on the edge of Ridgecrest and Cyril's Valley. And there's something right here next to this, the Lava Mountains on the south side. These are the Lava Mountains. So all three are connected, but isn't there something else here too? I think there is. Military test range? Bunkers? Bunkers and military test ranges. Pretty sure that's what we're looking at here. I might be wrong. That might not be a bunker, but it is military test range. This is like where they test rockets. Do you guys know that? Rocket test range. So they'll like put a rocket and lay it down on the ground and let it burn out to see if it functions through its full cycles. So... Power generation at Volcano, Volcano, and questionable site next to Volcano, and also government. Down into the middle of the Mojave Desert we go. What's there? Ludlow, Barstow, and Lavic Lake. That all rhymed. Well, at least up to the end. It's like a haiku poetry. Geophysical haiku. <laughs> okay, there we are. We are on the edge of the Lavic Lake Volcanic Complex. Pisgah Crater right across the highway. And the earthquake actually coming in here on the north side of the highway. We actually, I think, were here two weeks ago. No, more than that. It was longer. But look what we have going right through the desert right here. Well, we have a pipeline. And right next to the pipeline, we have at least... Look how many there are there. One, two, three, four. Look how many high-voltage power lines are here. These are the big kind, not the kind that go to your house. This is, I think, the most I've ever seen. Look how many towers there are. Look, there's another set right there. That's actually even bigger. This set is even bigger than these sets. Look how many there are. Oh, look, it branches off, and we have another set there. Dang. Wow. You guys got some major major electrical generation going on somewhere out there in the middle of the desert where we have ourselves a new earthquake right where it splits off. Amazing stuff going on there. All right. Hey, that's why I look it up. I'm the only person that apparently does in the world. Now, starting down here in Southern California, the south tip of the valley, we then spread out across the whole LA basin. We end up down at Salton Sea, but the stack of earthquakes is coming in here where that 4 came in, 3.6, whatever. Borrego Springs, Anza Gap, is in the middle of there where the 3.6 is. So let me highlight that. Well, it's underneath all these. Okay. So you know where the 3.6 is. It's down here in the middle of this whole stack. I'm interested in what's going on across L.A. What's going on up in North L.A., Central L.A., East L.A.? We got to go look these spots up. Let's go take a look. Starting up here, one6 Six at Ojai, California, 8.5 kilometer depth. It matters what's there. If there's nothing there, so be it. But I have to look them up. Now I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to find things that we already know are nearby. Since we've had to look up these spots so many times before. So you see, for instance, I've got oil marked right over here. I, I was already expecting that. But so many different oil and gas pumping operations across these hillsides. And I'm talking a lot. So here's two pumps right there at that particular pad. And this one has one, two, three, four, five different drill points at this pad. So it's not like we're just dealing with one at each pad. We're dealing with multiples and the tanks, the pumps, the jacks, the pipeline that connect between all of them. It goes across the valley, though. It doesn't just stop there. It goes out here. So we follow all of these pumping operators. Look how many there are. 
Okay, that's a lot. We follow them down to the coastline at Muscle Shoals, where we jump out into the ocean to the offshore platforms, Platform Henry, Platform Hermosa, and they're doing the offshore drilling out here for oil and gas. So it just carries on right out into the ocean, and we're right next to it, and the fault that goes across, well, the fault is where the oil is being extracted. Going down along the coast, we go down here southeast of Santa Cruz Island, and when we go in and look, just let's just go in on Google Earth here, and I again, I'm sorry for bumping the microphone there. It keeps getting knocked down there. Okay. So here east-southeast, Mugu Canyon, Thousand Oaks, south of Oxnard and the Naval Base here, Naval Air Station, Ventura County. I don't know. We're right next to the Naval Air Station, the base, and I mean, it's right next to it. But it's not listed as an explosion. It's not listed as anything. It's 21 kilometers depth down into the crust. Now, I'm starting to think that the VLF, since we were dealing with the U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Marines, U.S. Army, and U.S. National Guard, with earthquakes all in the past few days, that I think we're dealing with some kind of very low frequency communication of some kind, byproduct is earthquakes. We know this. Very low frequency, ultra low frequency, byproduct earthquakes. Oso, Washington, the spot where the landslide happened, come on. Very low frequency. Induces earthquake activity. It's already proved. VLF coming up out of the faults at Nepal Gorkha earthquake. VLF coming up out of the faults at the Japan Mega Quake earthquake in 2011. VLF comes up out of the faults before earthquakes happen. And if we have a VLF substation or a VLF transmission station, because they, they'll spread this out by miles. So they have these little transmit or the bigger transmitters, and they're spread out across huge, huge areas. And there's multiple buildings with a lot of power involved, even though it's a low frequency. So, next to the naval station, let's go down to the east by southeast. 2.5 earthquake coming in next to Maywood, California. One more time. Again, I have to look all these up, at least in the L.A. basin, because I start getting curious when we get next to things that are significant. So, for instance, this, Huntington Park, East L.A., we're sandwiched right between two oil pumping operations. And I always look 6 to 10 miles because they can drill out by several miles horizontally or at an angle. Look at all these drill points, oil and gas. So we're only a few miles. And I want to say it's like 5 miles maybe. Let's see. From the earthquake epicenter all the way over to the oil patch, 6 miles. 5.7 to the edge of the patch and six miles right to the middle of it. And I look six to 10 miles, just like the USGS used to over in Oklahoma before they changed the state regulations. And it's about the same distance over to the west. Let's go down to the east by southeast. Look up the 1.7. Might not be anything of any significance there at all. But we're starting to get down to where all the hot spots were. And I did not check the hot spots last night. So I think before this broadcast is over, we will go check the hotspots as well. People told me to check last night. I forgot. Here we are. Well, hey, hold on. We have a new earthquake right where all the fires broke out the other day. On the north side, right next to it. Next rad station there. We're at the base or the foot of the mountain. Another earthquake has just struck. And look what we have right across the highway. Oil. Oil pumping operation here. Oil and gas yet again. Right next to it. I wonder if it goes across the highway this way. You know, where there's one, there's more, right? Like, they'll just put these things on the sides of the roads out here, even. But we're already close enough. Let's get a measurement on that from the earthquake epicenter to the nearest marked oil well. And again, I told you, I look 6 to 10 miles on purpose because they drill out by, look, 4 miles to the oil pumping operation and about the same to the next rad. We're between the next rad and the oil pumping operation. New earthquake, and that's where the fires were? Please. Something's up. Temecula, California. Now we're getting really close to where the 4.0 earthquake struck, and we're getting close to where the electrical substation is. I don't know what to make of that, guys. The electrical right there at that 4 in Southern California. Other than it's probably related. Same with the next rad. 750,000 watt microwave transmitter, please. Nice big houses out here. Look at that. Okay, I don't see any hotspots marked. This is, I think, from a long time ago. No? We have a new hotspot 
right next to the earthquake epicenter from today, last night. Look at that. And people were asking me about this fire temperature. Obviously, the fire temperature is not 64,000 Kelvin, 115,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's something going on with the way the computer is reading these hotspots and what's causing them. I think they're related to the radar, the 64,000 degree temperature hotspots. I wonder if there's a tower right next to this. Is there a tower up on top of one of these hills that could be catching that radar signal? Do you know what I mean? Like the top of the microwave tower is getting hit or something? What do we have going on there? What is all that? What is that? Dude, oh man, I hate finding stuff like this. What is this? Look at that. It's... Makes no sense. What is that? Let's get to see if we got a street level view on this. No street level view on that? What is that? Now I gotta know. Now I've got to know. We've got a hotspot up there. What is this place? Unknown airfield. They're racing. A racing zone? Is this for racing? Makes no sense. Why would You wouldn't race that with the buildings on it. I don't know. Okay, but we got a hotspot right next to it. I need to know what's there. Oh my goodness gracious. we got a quarry there. Oh wait, is that a quarry? Those look like barracks of some kind or something. Man, okay, we're just getting, we're going down a rabbit hole now, and I don't like doing that live. You never know what you'll find when you do that, kids. All right, let's carry on. Down to the east southeast, we get down to the south tip of Salton Sea, and I can already tell you, uh, we already know what's at the south tip of Salton Sea, right down there in the middle, and we go across the border down to New Mexico, same sized earthquake, 1.3, down to the south. Let's just go take a quick look and see, show the new people what's at the south tip of Salton Sea. The earthquake's coming in here right next to Westmoreland, California, and right next to Westmoreland, these. Electrical generating geothermal turbines connected to pipelines that go to drill points. The drill points get the steam from the volcano here. Salton Buttes. Volcano. But the electrical generation again, right next to it. Going across the border, let's show you this. Over in New Mexico. So, let's actually grab the coordinates on the one in Mexico. Progreso, Baja, California. Mexico. Paste and search. Okay, the reason I want to pull the coordinates, I want to be very exact on where this is. See all these? Electrical generating solar farms. Every one of these is a different solar panel. They're huge. This is huge. This is a huge amount of electricity being generated on these solar panels. Just that one field alone right there. But look how many fields there are of it. These are all solar panels. That's not farming. Those are solar panels. All right, verified this the other day. We went and did the street level view on the spot where we could find a street level. All this electrical. Insane amount. And that's where the earthquake is striking right next to I shelled boy. Is there anywhere I missed out here? Oh, you know what? Hold on. These two earthquakes here. Just small. Little micro quakes out next to Indian Springs, Nevada. But there's something else here. Behold, new viewers, we're about to open your eyes to man made earthquakes at faults that humans made. Humans made faults here. This is Doomtown. Operation Rise Line, where they blasted away with surface nuclear tests, and then they started burying the nukes and detonating them underground. These underground nuclear test sites. U.S. Nuke Operation Victoria, June 19, 1992, 20 kilotons, just one of hundreds across the whole valley, right next to it. That's where the earthquake is. Now, they're not doing nukes there now. 
It's just a sign of man-made faults being compressed and broken as energy's flowing slightly across the plate out of Nevada next to the volcanoes. Over to the east we go, and we don't have much else to report on. So Oklahoma, oil pumping operations. Texas, oil pumping operations. I shouldn't need to show those to you unless you're just completely unaware of what's been going on in Texas. Well, this says New Mexico. Do you see that? Hey, this is a perfect example. See how it's in Texas? The star is where the earthquake is. Here's New Mexico. Here's Texas. They'll do this from time to time. I don't know why. It's the computer triangulating it, but there's so many other towns nearby they could triangulate from. It's almost like they don't want people to see Texas. But I don't know. That's like conspiracy level. So let's just go in and show you what's here and why they might not want you to go look or associate it with Texas. See all these pipelines? The pipelines go to drill points. The drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet, maybe even a few kilometers. Oil and gas, that's all these are. Fracking. Fracking. They're doing some fracking out there. And all of these are different drill points. Every little white square pad on the ground is different oil well, guys. These aren't towns or houses. None of these are towns or houses. All of these are drill points. Look how many there are. And that's actually, this is low compared to what's right next to it. Look at this county. All of these are drill points, every one of them. I can zoom in and prove that. I mean, if you don't believe it, just randomly zoom in. Take some time, you know, see what I'm talking about. Tens of thousands of drill points just in that one oil patch. And every county has been done that way. And our earthquake right on the edge of the craton. And the craton's been drilled. So force flows across the craton and it hits the drill points. And guess what happens? A break occurs. Now the same thing is up in Oklahoma. It's well known. Oklahoma, the oil gas. Just imagine Texas. Put it up into Oklahoma. 500,000 different drill points across the state of Oklahoma. Recapping. We're looking for something to happen in the northwest. We have two fours going down into California. That means the area between... Alaska and California is under serious stress. Juan de Fuca fracture zone. I would look out in the ocean. Okay. Now, how big? To be in line with the rest of the plate, the highest we're going so far is 5.1 up to 6.4. So we look between 5.1 and 6.4, about a magnitude and a half broad swath there. But I'll look within that magnitude between 5 and 6 to strike out in the ocean. Now, additionally... We have to warn everybody from the Bay Area down to Ridgecrest for something larger than the current 4.4 and 4.5. The plate is shifting. It's releasing energy down into California. You got two fours. We look between them for another break to happen. Finally, I have to warn over in the Midwest, over here in Oklahoma at the Kansas border, which I don't have to do normally much, only when a push is coming across. And a new 4 just broke, so that means new 4.0 range is going to be coming back in to Oklahoma at the border with Kansas, most likely. Watch in the middle of the edge of the Craton for a release to happen. Then the East Coast will move. We'll see new 3.0 range activity coming between New Brunswick and... Where was the last earthquake? New Jersey? Between New Brunswick and New Jersey... And who's between New Brunswick and New Jersey? Well, if we go along the edge of the Craton, we have Vermont, New Hampshire, and also going into Quebec. Eh? Get your Molson. So it'll either be right on the Vermont side of the border, or it'll be right on the Quebec side of the border. Either way, we're talking right on the edge of the Craton in the northeast. Should be about a magnitude less than what strikes in Oklahoma, and, of course, coming over from the west coast. Hopefully, I got that right. Internationally, recapping, 6.0 earthquake struck right in the middle of the plate boundary following our deep earthquakes. Over in Europe, you guys are on watch now. Italy, this is day one of a 7 to 10 day watch. Day one, Albania gets a 5 point something earthquake over there. So I'll just say that. Day one, you start moving. Pay attention for the rest of the 7 day time period, basically. Now, 7 to 10 days, but 7 days should tell us What's going on? Where else? Over here in Japan. Look, there's two different things that are going to be happening in Japan. 
where our rings overlap here on the coast of Japan, all the rings overlap, something bigger than the combined total of everything on all sides. So it's going to be going up at least into the 5.5 range on the coast of Japan. Northeast, coast of Honshu, most famous earthquake zone on the planet, right where all the rings overlap right there. Down to the south, it's open. No seismic activity to speak of much in the past how many days? We have to go back seven days, six to seven days to get any activity here in the middle. So I'd look in the middle, Philippines to Taiwan, South Japan, Ryukyu Islands. You see where the arrows come together and it's giant open? That's the middle point to watch. We have a middle point between these two sets of quakes. The pinkish colored earthquake down here, the 4.9 at Guam, and the whitish colored earthquake, the 5.1 off the coast of Japan, where the rings overlap here on the Izu Ridge, also will get hit by about the same sized earthquake that strikes over at Taiwan, Philippines. So same size quake that strikes here, we look for a similar size quake to strike over here in between. Again, the middle points are going to sort themselves out. There's more middle points. That's not the only spot. So, I mean, we can go between our sets of earthquakes here. Look where our rings overlap. It's right on Mount Krakatau in Indonesia in the last 48 hours. I have to show you all this. Look at the very top of the screen. It's something I don't normally talk about. Up here, 3484. Do you see that? Last week, we were at 2,000, 2,500 something for the week. Now I'm looking at seven days, and we have 3,484. I also noticed that I'm, when I'm moving around Earthquake 3D, it's a little choppy and slow, letting me know there's about a thousand more place marks on the screen that the computer is keeping track of trying to 3D render. And so we're dealing with about, I, let's just be conservative, we're dealing with about a thousand more earthquakes of every magnitude this week than we were dealing with last week when I showed you that same number. I said, hey, look, we got 2,000 for the week. We've had weeks where there's been over 5,000, enough that Earthquake 3D can't handle them all. We've had weeks that go up that high. So right now, we are between that record high number that we saw a couple of years ago, 2018, with those 5,000. And we're at 30, basically 3,500 right now. We have 1,500 more to go to reach the record high, but we're way higher in the number of earthquakes than we were last week, which was in the 2,000 range. So it's an increase. There's an increase in the number, the frequency of earthquakes. Hey, hold on. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody, wake up. Everybody. 4.6 earthquake just struck right down in the middle of New Zealand, right in the middle of our warned area. When did it hit? Hold on. Man, that's a perfect hit. Here's Topo Volcano. Dude. And how ironic, because it's down in New Zealand where some of my biggest criticisms came from. North Island of New Zealand just struck. UTC time, 1924-14. It's 1949. So, start of this broadcast. <laughs> start of this broadcast. We warned you. Well, actually, I warned you over the last couple days. But now it's just hit. And it's been a minute since the North Island's been struck right in the middle of it. Let's go put the coordinates in and see where it is. We couldn't understand. Oh, got to take out the semicolon out of there. Down to New Zealand. All right. Here's the earthquake epicenter. It's on land, so it's likely felt. There's Topo Volcano. I want to measure and see how far that is. So let's measure from the earthquake epicenter over to the center of Topo. 80 miles to the center of the volcano, to the center of the lake. 80 miles. Okay, hey, that's definitely acceptable. It's within the magnitude of what we were looking for, and it's within 80 miles, and it's down to a two-day time warning there, so you just got it. Now look at the spacing on this. Let's get the smaller earthquakes out of there. Look at the fours. Do you see how one ring bisects the other almost perfectly? What I think is going on here is across the red line, let's show you the red line down here. See how the red line goes down across... New Zealand goes all the way down to where the other earthquake is, down to the south. So we have earthquakes at both ends, basically, of that red line, don't we? One right at the bend up here, one right at the bend down here. Now, a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes formed between those two points. Think of it like this. A standing wave spreading through a tank. And these are the two ends of the tank, and the same sized earthquakes are spread out through the tank. 
Now this is a tank in the laboratory, but the same sized waves in the standing wave spread out and fill in each other's previous middle point. The peak fills in the valley middle point exactly. I could just park my mouse over the spot and just watch as the valley fills in the peak and the peak fills in the valley. Perfect equal spacing through the tank on the standing wave. But now I want you to imagine this standing wave spreading across that red line, the uneven plate boundary. But look at the magnitudes. We have a 5.1 on the north side and a, basically a 5 on the south, a 4.9. And in between we get 4.6s. So it's like one wall on the north side, one wall on the south side. That's where the bigger earthquakes, that's where the pushes are. And then in between the standing wave. And that's why I warned the North Island, that middle fulcrum point that I just showed you in the standing wave, sorts out across a mass distance. And here, we're showing everything 4.0 and greater over the last day. Do you notice anything? 4.6, 4.6, 4.6. On both sides. But it's spreading out like an arrow. We have to look at it this way. Do you see this? Or like a number seven shape? But think of that like an arrow. This whole thing, down and around, back down and around, all just shifted on the same basis, where the big push came in underneath. With the deep earthquakes that are hammering in on the underside, where our letter D is, right here on the edge of the pinnacle tip of it. So, wow, New Zealand, there it is. New earthquake just hit, eh? All right, guys, much love. Hey, do you like what I'm doing? If you like what I'm doing, there's some people that do, some people that don't. If you like what I'm doing, please hit the like button. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, hit that thumb up. If you're watching on Twitch where I'm live right now, please subscribe. Maybe if you want to support my operation, I get a financial kickback from that. And everybody, thank you for doing that. That has made a huge difference. Thank you for sharing the information, whether you're on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or a parlor or wherever it is that you can even manage to get your voice out anymore. I appreciate you all taking part in that. And finally, let me remind you to have an emergency kit. Have an emergency kit, have an earthquake plan. You know, this transcends all of the other stupid stuff that's going on in society right now. You know, I don't care what your party is, and you shouldn't care what mine is, or even if you're part of that. That what good is politics or religion or any of the divisive things that are in life if you don't even survive the earthquake you could have known was coming? Or what if you get injured? Not, you know, it's not a survival thing, but what if you just get injured from an earthquake? Something falls off the shelf and hits you or whatever that you could have known was coming. Right? So again, I'm doing this for everybody. I want you all to have a plan. Have the emergency kit so that you have at least a couple days of food and water in it, as well as the important documents you might need. Also medicines if you require it. Please remember the children that you have or people that you might know nearby that have children. So maybe things in there for them and for the disabled and the elderly. Always look out for them, guys. So ward up and much love. And you'll come up with way better things. I'm not even trying to lecture you. I'm just reminding you to take the time to have that plan. And if anything big goes down, I'll jump back on at a moment's notice, do another update for us, get it out to the world. Please share this around the world. Anybody you know who in any of the areas that I mentioned, let them know. And this includes the West Coast of the United States this time. So it's not like I warn the West Coast every week. Only when there's major seismic unrest coming in do we start looking for this greater than 5.0 activity to pop up. And it doesn't happen that way all the time. It's maybe a few times a year where it's really a bunch of deep earthquakes. We call it go time, the deep earthquake go time, where something's getting ready to happen, something bigger. That's why I warned China. Look, it's not like China gets hit every day. I don't know if I have viewers there or not. I don't even know if they would allow my videos to be seen over there. But maybe somebody knows somebody somewhere and they could just like write it down in a text message and let everybody know, hey, just watch out Central China. For the next few days, it's not like we have to watch for a long time. We watch for seven to ten days. We're already five to six days in the watch. So we only have like three or four more days to go for the watch in China, for instance. But let them know. that I mean, they deserve to know. If nothing hits, I'll get back on and beat myself up and try and figure out where I got it wrong. I do, hey... What I do there with getting back on and trying to figure out where I got it wrong is more than any meteorologist ever does. And they get it wrong all the time with established meteorological rules that supposedly are almost like laws at this point. Anyway, 
No complaints. We're doing okay, and I hope you're doing better. Be safe. Much love. Peace out, and look out for this as a video over on YouTube in just a few.